I wanted to be at Texas State. Uh, I chose to be at Texas State. Uh, I'm from Texas. That was important to me. Um, I always knew if the right guy got this job, you better watch out. You better watch out. This is Win Now or Get Bent, episode 115. If you don't already know, I'm Kev Tardello, coming to you on Friday, August 4th, and we have football. The Bobcats, they're back on the gridiron, practicing at Bobcat Stadium, officially started things off on Wednesday. They had report day on Tuesday. If you heard the last pod, you heard me previewing all of that. I got to go out there on Wednesday, talk to Coach Kenny, get to get to see some of the players do their thing. It was awesome. It was great. We're, we're back. Don't quite have that nice crisp fall air that we should this time of year. You know, it is, it's, it's, it's still blistering hot. So it didn't, it didn't fully feel like football. It's kind of miserable outside, but here in the next few weeks, it'll, it'll start to feel like fall. It'll smell like it. And then, then it will officially be back September 2nd at Baylor. Uh, this episode is sponsored by TGC. The Galindo Collective, thegalindocollective.com. It's G-A-L-I-N-D-O, galindocollective.com. A team of professional business consultants dedicated to helping others realize their business potential through people, planning, and practice. Their services cover a wide range of areas such as business strategy, marketing, human resources, and financial planning. They offer full service solutions on general business evaluations, but specialize in residential and rental properties, commercial operations, and construction. If you own property and want to maximize its profitability, contact TGC at thegalindocollective.com, G-A-L-I-N-D-O, Galindo, or contact them on their social medias as well on on Twitter at TGC underscore LLC and on Instagram and Facebook at the Galindo Collective. Shout out to Rick Galindo, my guy over there. He's a true Texas State sicko, a Texas State grad. I know he loves him. Some Bobcats, true supporter of the pod. Got us to Sunbelt Media Day with us through the whole season. Shout out to TGC. So if you need any business consulting, want to maximize your profitability of your business or your property, hit up our guys at TGC, thegalindocollective.com. All right, let's get to some Bobcats. Uh, I talked a little bit about fall camp to start it out. We got to go out there. We got to talk to GJ Kinney. They didn't let media see a lot. They opened it up at the beginning where it was just warm-ups and a few individual drills. And then they kicked everybody out and let us come back at the end when and we could interview uh, G.J. Kinney, offensive lineman Caleb Johnson, the big show is what they call him. Uh, he looks like the, the former WWE wrestler, the seven-footer. Uh, and Ben Bell, who, who a lighter Ben Bell. He says he gained weight, but he definitely lost some weight on his head when he, he shaved, it, shaved that red mane of his. It's gone now. Uh, it's a little disappointing. Tell you, hear his answer, and he 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 shaved it for God to get closer to God. Uh, you know, technically, the more hair you have, the closer you are to God. If God is in is is above you, you know. So I've always heard some some what is it? Uh, uh, some country women wear their hair up high to be closer to God is what I've heard that one before. So no, but shout out to Ben Bell. You know, so I I get it, especially with this summer heat, man. Whew. When I'm trimming up my beard, sometimes I'm just tempted. You know, I could just run this across my head, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a heater all the time. But you know, that's why sometimes you just gotta, you gotta throw it back, throw it, throw it back, tie it off, and not worry about it as much. But locks off, locked in for our guy Vin Bell over there. But it, it was great to catch up with all of them. Uh, talking with GJ Kinney, it's real, and I was saying it a little bit in the spring. I just I love the way he approaches a press conference where he comes up and I I should have had a, a timer on it for his opening statement. It was probably thirty seconds. He came in there, he's quick, just you know, hey, we went out there, we practiced trying to get better. It's day one. Questions and it was it was great. Ask him about the quarterbacks and and he it, it didn't didn't spend an inordinate amount of time on the quarterbacks, but he did talk. He he gave a lot of good points in the little details that he that he had. The main point, you know, we asked him just a general synopsis of how the quarterbacks are looking after day one, uh, and he was talking about Malik Hornsby, saying, commending his athleticism, 
talking about how what a great athlete he is, how dangerous that is for the defense, but at the same time, he's just not making the right decisions at that quarterback position that this offense needs. Now, we, we've talked about it at nauseum before on this pod where it, it's a choice-driven, uh, a, a vertical choice-driven offense, and the the choice is in the ha- is in uh, in the hands of that quarterback. They're the ones making pre-snap reads. They're the ones deciding on whether it's a it's a lot of times if it's a run, if it's a pass, a deep pass, any of that type of stuff. So it takes a lot of that to grasp this offense, and that's something that Kenny once again pointed out that Hornsby is is lacking in. Uh, I I will say that there was a lot of TV people out yesterday, first day of fall camp, and they took some really good footage in that little beginning time that I was saying that media could go out there. A lot of time it's for those guys to get some good clips that they can throw on the local news that evening. And one of those clips is Hornsby connecting with Drew Donnelly. I tweeted about it. If you haven't seen it, go scroll my timeline. Uh, and, and, And shout out to Dennis, who I retweeted on that. He's a Texas State grad over there. Um, up there in Austin, but he he Hornsby connected with Drew Donnelly on a deep pass. Don't know how many yards it was. It was you know over twenty, over twenty five for sure. Uh, a nice deep pass caught him in stride in the end zone, and you know Drew Donnelly himself. I've talked about that where those are probably the two fastest guys on the team. You ask players, and it's it's a toss up. But he asked Malik Hornsby, he says it's him. So I, I I do I do like that confidence in him there. Uh, so you can, but you can see him air it out. You can see him demonstrate that arm strength. So any of these questions about, you know, uh, is he is he mispositioned? Should he switch to an athlete position or receiver? Um, I I still I, I see a throw like that, and I'm like, you know, he he might just need to grow in this and get used to those decisions because that's not how every offense is. It's it's a lot of times it's you follow the script. And don't deviate from it. This one, it's a little more laissez-faire with it. No, that's not, you know, saying any. Uh, I'm not trying to denigrate this style of offense at all. If anything, I appreciate that. I think it's pretty cool. You, you let the players play, uh, and and you, you let them cook. And he's he's he may need some time to learn how to how to do that. It seems like he definitely needs time. Uh, based on the comments we heard in the spring, from what I saw in the spring, and then the comments again this week from GJ Kinney. That seems to be the situation. Uh, it's a terrific athlete, though. Um, and he's got an arm. Uh, just needs he. GJ literally says it. He just needs to clean it up. And, you know, that's what it is. That's what it is. And when he talks about TJ Finley, you know, day one obviously has some work to do, but he's a tall guy. We've made enough about that. 6'7", 255 pounds is what he's officially listed at on the Texas State roster. Which is updated, by the way. Go check it out if you want to see some new numbers on some of these players. Uh, Bo Corrales is wearing number three, stuff like that. You know, PJ Hatter's taking number six. Just some of these new guys getting getting their numbers. It's always interesting to see who gets the single digits when it's the new guys. It's always very telling. Of uh, it's a badge of honor for these these guys. So they wanna they wanna um, they want that single digit. And if you're new on the scene, you're getting a single digit. That means they they think highly of you. Like Kenny didn't name any starters, but he named Connor Fox as the number one tight end. And you you look on the the roster, and he's number nine, a tight end getting that um, single digit. I feel like last time I saw that was m- maybe just off the top of my head that maybe there was someone since then. But Keenan Brown was the last guy, uh, number six. That was a fun fun season with him. But anyways, I digress. Let's go back to T.J. Finley. So GJ Kenny was talking about Finley and just commending his his poise being the first first day new guy on the scene felt that he handled it really well liked how he was looking in the offense threw the ball well he had lots of positives to say about Finley and if it was anything negative it's it's he brushed it off as well it's first day and, and, you know instead of just going into detail about anything specific um, so it, it just shows me those comments show me that, that right now he's favoring Finley over Hornsby. Um, I, I think it's it's a good problem to have when you have a guy. When I see a guy who is athletic and as talented as Hornsby, and you're like, ah, might be the second best option right now at this at this moment. But who knows? I mean, Malik could could dive into this 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 playbook and these schemes of this offense and really study and and focus on on those pre-snap decisions and and the choices he has to make when the ball is snapped uh it just may take some time to get used to 
Uh, still, you know, we'll see. It was day one for Finley. Who knows if he's truly taken on these concepts because who, who knows how hard it was on day one. Day one, they're not really wearing pads. It's not as it's not as complicated and as complex as it's going to be as fall camp continues. Uh, C.J. Rogers, he had some uh, nice things to say about him, about him mentally grasping the concepts of this offense and making the right decisions, just wasn't putting the ball in the right spot. That's what he said about Rogers. Um, that's that's pretty much what you, what you'd say about a backup. You know, that's what it feels like for Rogers. But we saw some good things from him in the spring. And you never know; injuries happen. It's nice to have somebody who who understands and is able to work in this offense. But PJ Hatter, it seems like he's definitely getting the red shirt after what they what they said. They, no reps for him in seven on seven, so he he's more than likely not going to play much this season, uh, barring something crazy happening, something something unforeseen. But uh, I would imagine he might be might be out of it. But again, I've brought, I've talked about this before. Twenty thirteen, Tyler Jones. That was the the situation with him. He's getting a red shirt fall camp. Not a ton of focus, putting him on scout team. He's on scout team over there tuning up this number one defense. Uh, and that it was the 2013 defense. Twenty That era of, of defense for the Bobcats was particularly good. David Mayo, Michael Rackbo, Craig Mager. I mean, it was it was a, a pretty good squad that he was he was handling on scout team. And it took a few, se- a few games into the season. It was that Wyoming game where he finally got in there. Um, but they decided into the season to rip his red shirt off. So don't count PJ Hatter, Hatter out completely. You know he could could surprise everybody and have a, have his Tyler Jones moment because he's got some fun footage. I'll tell you what. And, and anytime GJ Kenny talks about him or or it seems like anybody I've, I I talk to about PJ Hatter, it's nothing but good things you hear about him. So uh, he'll have his chance soon enough. But besides quarterback talk, a lot was made about the offensive line. Uh, still issues at center. That was issues in the spring, if you remember. They were having a lot of issues there. Uh, Silence Robinson, after just a couple practices, he hopped in the transfer portal, ended up going to Incarnate Word. Uh, That's part of that giant swap that the Cardinals and the Bobcats took part in. Uh, so they've been struggling ever since the spring. They were moving Jaden Smith, who's been a guard the whole time he's been at Texas State. They were putting him at center. Uh, they were just they were doing what they could at that position. And Austin Markowitz, I, I haven't checked the roster, but he was here in the spring. Not sure if he's still there. There's since they updated that roster, there are a handful of guys who are no longer on the roster, like Austin Groeschel. I noticed Drew Jackson, the receiver, no longer on there. Markowitz might be one of those as well. I'll, I'll have to check on that. Um, but so they were they were kind of those musical chairs at that center position. Uh, if you remember when Marcus Alexander came on the pod, he was the guard from Oklahoma. He transferred to Texas State. He told me when I interviewed him for, for Win Now or Get Bent that he was going to be switching to center, a, new, a brand new position for him. And then, of course, they were able to get Danny Valenzuela. Uh, he's trans- he transferred in as well. He was a center at Arizona State. But then Kenny was also talking about how they were working in Caleb Johnson, at center, Nash Jones at center, um, guys who are usually tackles. Nash Jones, the left tackle particularly, doesn't seem like that's where they'll play, but might just be some insurance reps where just in case something goes real wrong and you got to put someone in at that very, very important center position, they have guys ready to go. Uh, but he was pretty blunt about it and said the snapping wasn't great. And that's something that they need to clean up. I appreciated that. I appreciated it. He was blunt. with on th- He he didn't give too many details, but he gave enough details where I could take some things away. Where center is still a concern. That was the big concern in the spring. It was my biggest concern leaving the spring, honestly. And it, it's still a concern on this offensive line because they, they've got to shore that up. A lot of new offensive linemen. I think 12, 12 offensive linemen. I'll, I'll go into this class a little more because that was another thing that, Kenny said was the recruiting class for 2023 is done. It's locked up. Now I've, I've teased it. I've hinted at, it. I've talked about the Patreon page, patreon.com slash win now or get bent. If you want to check that out, I've been posting articles. I've been posting a lot of them this week. I'm going to keep posting a lot. It's great. It's like I have my own blog back. I had one buddy, my buddy Cameron Dean sent me a message and said, man, it's like we have the Bobcat report kept back. And and just filled my heart a little bit because those were the times where I was really cranking away and I was writing every day. 
I love the Statesman, but they don't want the amount of Texas State coverage I want to put out. So it's nice to have Patreon, patreon.com slash win now or get bit to go on there and post some things. And part of, I posted one, I posted something Thursday morning. I was going to say this morning, but this pod comes out on Friday, posted something on Thursday morning about this recruiting class because GJ Kinney said they are, they're done. They're finally done. And I teased it before two players um, that, that I've been teasing, trying to get y'all to go to that Patreon page. We'll reveal them now, mainly because they have revealed them themselves on the roster and at the press conference. That's Oklahoma State receiver Langston Anderson, former four-star out of high school, really good player, and Baylor defensive lineman Victor Obi. So those two additions, minus Derek Brown, pretty sure I've talked about Derek Brown here, but I'm pretty sure I did that last episode. Uh, that gives them 52 for this class. So we, I talked about it when they were at 51. At one point, that was including Derek Brown, that they wanted two more spots to get the 53, and they were designating those for a receiver and a defensive back. Pretty sure the Derek Brown situation, him not, him not playing this season, that made them switch to a defensive lineman. They went and got Victor Obi. He's a senior at Baylor, 6'5", similar body type to, to Derek Brown. So that, that was definitely that pass rusher, that long guy. They seem to really like tall, long, rangy athletes. I mean, even when you look at at some of the commits from from last weekend, which I'll, I'll talk about as well, because last one I only talked about Raylan Adams. Um, they they are they seem to be really focused on bringing in some some tall, rangy guys for this for this team. Uh, so yeah, I mentioned 50, 52 for this class. On Patreon, I posted about I posted all 52 players. I linked their bio on the name and everything, and broke it down by position. You know, so so some numbers here on this one. Uh, let's see, of the 52 man class, 18 are P5 transfers, 13 are FCS transfers, seven from the G5, another seven from junior college, and another seven are high school signees. It's 27 total players on offense. 25 on defense a nice well-rounded class but yeah that's three quarterbacks two running backs eight receivers three tight ends 12 offensive linemen 12 offensive linemen that's what i mean and they're they're still trying to find the center between a, a lot of those guys that are coming in and 10 defensive linemen three linebackers six safeties five corners that's 11 DBs total. I broke them down into safeties and corners. I think maybe two or three of these guys are actually going to be moved to that nickel star position. Uh, like I have Nick, I have Michael Boudin, uh, Michael Boudin the third out of Navarro. Uh, he he is actually um, he was playing in that nickel position over the spring, so I, I could I could see him still still doing that a little bit more unless they have some of these new guys like Bobby Crosby or I know Sean Holton they're looking at him at corner the incarnate word transfer John Blunt from Eastern Kentucky I'd imagine they'd look at more of a corner to put in that position but uh yeah so but the class is a wrap they're finally done now after after bringing in Anderson and Victor Obi they're they are they have finally wrapped up this class um and, you know, I mentioned it for 2024. They brought in some guys as well. Uh, let me pull this up. Yeah, after the, all the horses and Ferraris, it's yielding more commits. Maybe there's some more coming as well, but these are these are the three they have now. Uh, yeah, say, uh, they have receiver from La Vega, Junior Thornton, uh, and linebacker Michael Savalli from Clear Springs. So, the, And that's to go along with Newton DB, Raylan Adams, now Adams, he's he's an athlete at Newton, plays both sides, but he's going to be a DB as we talked about on the last one. Thornton is a receiver for sure. Um, when you look at, oh, I, I really enjoyed watching uh, Silvalli's tape. He's a taller linebacker. You know they, they list him shorter than he actually is. You can tell he's a, a lot taller, and he he just looks like a guy who could play any position on the front seven. Definitely it, it needs some work on technique and some things in that area but um another really good player players with with offers you know uh, thornton had a utsa offer same as adams um 
And so it's it's good. I also spoke to Tyler Norris at a WT high WT White High School. He's a big offensive lineman out there. He's one of those 17 visitors that I actually I also posted on the Patreon. Um, so that's a little teaser for you if you want to go see that 17 man list. But even he, he's he's pretty close to thinking about it. That's about the one thing this class is missing. This 2024 class because now they're at five members, which is pretty great. Uh, they better than it was, I should say. It's great. It's still behind some of these other other teams, some of their their counterparts. But it's getting up there to get three after one weekend right before fall camp is a, a nice little push. But they could go for some linemen. They have a quarterback, two receivers, a DB, and a linebacker. And they, they could use some linemen out there. So w- watch out for Norris, Tyler Norris out there. He, he could uh, he could potentially come on. Uh, this episode will be shorter, a shorter episode. Not going to include press conference audio in this one or video. Going to kind of change up the format a little bit where we're going to separate the episodes from interviews. We did that last week with Sunbelt Media Day, and that actually seemed to be great. We got more people viewing both sides. Uh, I, I will say I've been doing it for a while on this pod where I will upload the press conference audio from any time they have a press conference. So if that is how you consume the press conferences, if you're used to getting it from this podcast, then let us know. Let us know in the comments on Twitter, YouTube comments. If you're on Patreon, hit us up there. Hit us up anywhere and let us know if that's something you want us to continue to leave in the episode because we're kicking around some ideas of of we're going to take the interview and, and separate it, like I was saying, but the press conference, maybe even still uploading that just audio version if that's something that people still want it if that's something where you're you're just so used to getting the press conference here let me know and we'll keep them coming otherwise we're, we're just going to navigate y'all to txst.com where they upload all the press conferences uh where it, they put the youtube video link on it and, and all that good stuff so you're, you're able to access it there uh the inner but like i was saying with the interviews we'll still have audio versions for that they probably just they're not going to be in the episode where it'll be the episode is just like this, where I'm talking, updating on the Bobcats, and then we'll we'll have a, a separate episode. Uh, there'll be a separate video on YouTube. It'll be a separate audio file. If you're subscribed to both, they'll still just upload to you. But it's just it's just a, a minor format change. Just wanted to make everybody aware of that. That's just something that we're we're implementing a little more. Uh, check out wnogb.com. All our merch. Got the shirt on right here. If you're watching on the YouTube, I can tell I'm not as zoomed in as I'm supposed to be because I can actually see the shirt right now. So my bad to Zach Webb producing, but you can see the shirt on the YouTube channel because of that angle. Uh, there may even be a, a little something over my over my left shoulder over here. If you're if you're watching on the YouTube channel, you got You got to zoom in. It's an Easter egg. Check it out if you can. We'll we'll be talking about that very soon. Uh, I mentioned the Patreon, patreon.com slash win now I get bent. It's $5 a month. You access some insider information. I've got articles pumping on there. We've got a discord where you got access to me where we're giving updates before the in between the pod talking about thing. I, I was teasing before with some stuff that I wasn't putting on the pod, putting on Patreon, but for the most part, it'll, it'll, it'll just be a, a, a lot of articles, a lot of, a lot of consistent Texas state coverage stuff i'm going to try and hit that up every single day out there um again thank you to tgc the galindo collective.com that's g-a-l-i-n-d-o galindo collective.com thank you to them for sponsoring us through the whole season thank you to zach webb for editing all these pods all the videos on the youtube channel go subscribe to the youtube channel if you haven't yet on youtube win now or get bent is our channel my guy Zach Webb has been working really hard pumping out a lot of those videos. Well, he gets the audio done too, but man, he the real work is in those videos, and he, he's been putting in that time. Six videos last week from Sunbelt Media Day. Very cool stuff. Very appreciative of Zach Webb once again. Follow us on our socials, at WinNowOrGetBent on Twitter, at WNOGB on Instagram. Uh, there's a threads out there and, you know, there's a Facebook, you can find those too. I, I need to, I need to get better at updating all those, but check us out on, on all those. Make sure you're subscribed on any of these platforms. If you're like, Hey man, why are you throwing this Patreon and this merch side at me? I'm not trying to spend any money, man. I get it. You're still supporting the pod by listening, 
by subscribing, commenting, all that good stuff. So any of the platforms that you're listening to is YouTube, Apple, Spotify, make sure you're subscribed, commenting, uh, signing up your friends, signing up your pets. Dylan, I'm still looking for your dog, Fifi, or, or whatever that dog's name is out there. Dylan's my, my high volume commenter on YouTube. That's right. I'm bringing you up again. He mentioned it. He signed up for the Patreon. I guess I guilt tripped him. Don't feel, don't feel guilt tripped anybody. It's just, it's a little extra. It's not a donation. It's, it's $5 and you're going to get a, a, a lot more juice on patreon.com slash win now or get bent. Lots of plugs, lots of plugs. Uh, we're going to keep going with our Tuesday, Friday schedule. We'll have another episode this Tuesday. If that Tuesday, Friday schedule will stay the same through the season. But like I said, with those interviews, they may not drop on those Tuesday, Fridays, like, like we've been used to. Uh, and again, if you want those interviews included on the episode, if you like the one big long episode, sound off, let me hear you. No matter, no matter what your opinion is, let me know what, what you're feeling about the formatting of the pod. Because I'm definitely not trying to do too much, but I do want to make it better, a little easier to consume if it's smaller episodes and uh, you know, but I, I, I also don't want to spread out all the content so nobody knows where to find it either. So let me know how you're feeling. Let me know what you're thinking. And uh, there'll be little changes like that in the fall. But other, uh, otherwise, we're, we're coming in hot and heavy twice a week, Tuesday and Friday. We'll, we will be dropping for sure. I'm sure we're gonna, we have to do something Saturday night. It's like post game, right? Game ends. Click on the camera. I'll, I'll get something for you all r- real fast on Saturday night's post game. I mean, it's going to be a cool year because at least eight of the 12 games I'm going to be at with the two with Baylor and UTSA at non-conference. And I'll say Zach and I have been kicking around some ideas. Uh, you know, we, we drove right by Lafayette not too long ago. And it's this it's in a bad drive. When do they play them? In October? October 7th? Might have to consider that. TGC hooked us up last time. Maybe we can find another sponsor for that as well and and get on the road a little bit. That'd be a lot of fun. You know, those subscribers keep going up on Patreon and we'll have some gas money and I'll, I'll make sure to use it on that. That's the other thing too. With Patreon, that goes to su- supporting the pod, all the extra nice cameras I got to get from my guy Webb to make me look good. Uh, all the all the extra stuff that we need, like travel costs and, and all of that. It, it goes towards that. So uh, um, again, I hope y'all feel, feel, uh, feel like subscribing there and, and getting a little extra text state content. All right. That's it. No more sales pitches. I appreciate all of y'all. It goes out there. This podcast literally doesn't exist without y'all. I'd be speaking into the void and I appreciate all of you supporting and, and consuming this content. Uh, I cannot wait for this season. We're on the eve of it. Is GJ Kenny going to light up the scoreboard like he's talked about so often? I hope so. It'd be a lot of fun. It, whether it's fun or not fun, we're going to talk about it. We'll be right here on Win Now or Get Vent, hammering it out, talking about these Bobcats. All right. But all right, everybody. Thanks again, sickos. Win now or get bent.